Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 8th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. As a quick reminder, today, April 7th, as I record this uh, podcast, it's also the 10th anniversary of Heartbleed. Heartbleed, of course, is often seen as sort of a watershed moment in open source security. And we had sort of an other moment like this just the last couple weeks with the XE Util backdoor. Let's hope that some of the funding for bug bounties and such is expanding. That's sort of what got started after Heartbleed. We also got another side note to this entire event, and this is another merch request that the hacker who planted the XE Util backdoor made for LibArchive. Now, this particular request was made November 2021, and it replaced a safe printf function with an just regular f printf function. So that way escape sequences may not necessarily be encoded correctly. This function happened in an error message where then unsafe input may be echoed back to the victim and the insertion of escape sequences could potentially lead to code execution. It's not clear if this was ever exploited in any way, but of course it's a very typical way to implant more subtle backdoors by including bugs in code that even after a more casual review, even if they're found, are not necessarily considered malicious, just careless, and as such don't necessarily blow the identity of that malicious submitter. The change in lib archive has been removed, but of course that code was out for a lot longer than the XE util backdoor. So definitely something where updates and such need to be applied. Researchers at Sansec have found an interesting persistent mechanism being used by attackers attacking the Magento e-commerce suite. This particular Magento backdoor takes advantage of the layout update database. This database includes code that's periodically being executed, it's XML formatted, and yes, can lead to code execution. So the attacker already compromised your system, has access to the database, and now is injecting that XML into the database to update the database and inject the backdoor each time that the checkout card is requested. That way, if the breach is discovered, the backdoor is removed, well, you're immediately being reinfected with it. Of course, this assumes somewhat sloppy instant response procedures here. And yes, it's always difficult to make sure that your system actually is free from any backdoors after it has been infected. But uh, then again, Magento is kind of designed as a system to be used by companies that aren't necessarily big, sophisticated e-commerce giants, but more smaller companies. And with that often don't have the more sophisticated instant response capability. And ever wonder why DNS cache poisoning attacks aren't more of a deal than maybe some people think they should be? In particular, given that we have sort of a couple of large DNS providers that a good portion of the internet is using, like for example, Google's famous 8.8.8.8. Well, Google now published a brief blog post with what they are doing to fight cache poisoning comes down really to three things, and that's DNS cookies, case randomization, and TNS over TLS. In particular, uh, DNS cookies is something that if you're operating a recursive resolver, you should uh, take note of and probably enabled if it's not already enabled by default in your uh, particular recursive resolver. It's a very simple technique to prevent a lot of the DNS cache poisoning techniques. And in other miscellaneous vulnerabilities, we do have a remote code execution vulnerability in Procade's Fabric OS. If you're using one of their switches, make sure you update CVSS score for this particular vulnerability is 8.6. No authentication is required. 
And as you heard in the introduction, I'm in London this week. I'll be teaching a class here as part of our London April event. And I'll also be giving a public evening talk on Tuesday. If you're interested, I'll add a link to details and the registration to the show notes, but you need to register before you show up. Uh, no cost, just we do want to know how many people show up. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.